morning. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings to you. And why do I want to talk to you about Noah? I think that Noah is, is uh, really, uh, we can learn a lot from Noah, especially in this season. I think that it's a blessing. I think that it's empowering. And I think that um, it can help us to hold our faith. Because it's important to be able to hold your faith. Your faith is not just for when things are going well or when there's just the average thing that's happening. But your faith is to designed to deal with supernatural things, supernatural events, cataclysmic events. God has given you a measure of faith to use. And the reason why I'm going to talk about Noah today is because I believe we can learn something from the way that Noah did things and it can help us as we are adjusting, as we are relating, so that we can acclimate, learn from the Word of God, apply the Word of God, and grow from the Word of God as we delve into the Scriptures and see His examples, God's examples for us to live by. So today, I'm just going to give it a few more moments. I'm going to let people come on in. I'm going to let people just uh, become a part of what it is that we're doing here today. I don't want to just uh, give people, uh, just hop on it, but I want to give people a chance to, to join in with us. So it's like if you'll just pray with me as we continue to uh, uh, focus and prepare for the uh, reading of the scripture and the hearing of his word. So uh, Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the in the name of Jesus and just Pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength, our strength, and our Redeemer. I thank you, Lord. Now, for those of you all who are going to, who you may have come in after this uh, this uh, session and you think, you know, oh, you know, um, I missed it. Um, well, listen, there's just going to be a brief time where we're just kind of waiting we're waiting uh for others to come on so you might want to fast forward it if you come on later that's like to the meat and the content of what we're talking about today but we're going to talk about noah and we're going to start uh we're going to open up with prayer this morning there are some people that they just decided hey i'm i'm going to stay in today and it's okay if you decided to stay in today. It is okay for you to be in the house. You know, it's like, you know, one of the things that I want you to know is that it says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman watcheth in vain. So isn't it good to know that good today to know that God watches over us? He watches over us and he doesn't just watch over us. He watches over his word to perform it in our lives. Yes, he does. So today we're going to talk about Noah. We're going to talk about his experience and what we can pull from his experience as we move through the scriptures and apply it to what is happening today. Because I believe God has a timely word for us that can empower us, that can focus us, that can strengthen us as we move in this hour to address the challenges that we may face going forward. All right. Okay. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Word. And um, for those of you who have decided to stay home you and, and you're, you're wanting to get some Word, you're wanting to get some bread, let me just say, welcome. You are welcome here. Um, and uh, just try to coordinate with your, your pastors and your ministerial team. 
And, you know, if, if you are in a church home, to, to find out what exactly is, um, you know, what, what, are, what their plans are, what they're doing as far as, you know, uh, keeping connected and staying connected. Because remember that uh, we forsake not the assembling of the saints in Scripture does not mean that you have to be in breathing distance. It means that, you know, we have all kinds of technology now. We've got, um, you know, Facebook Live. We have all kinds of connecting instruments. You know, it's like to where you can be online and you can relate and you can share uh, the word and you can uh, worship together and you can praise together and you can share testimonies together. So don't uh, get so concrete in your thinking that you don't um, remember that, you know, God has given us wonderful gifts, wonderful inventions that he also, um, uh, we can use to continue to fellowship with one another. Okay. All right. So, um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to start out with, I want to, I want to go ahead and, um, uh, open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Father, in the name in the name of Jesus, we just come to you right now. We just ask you for your blessing over this word, that you would um, give, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Father, that those who hear the word would be enriched by the word, empowered by your word, and healed by your word, and comforted by your word, guided by your word. Lord, I just thank you. For breakthroughs and for wisdom and for revelation, we bind the spirit of fear. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit, a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And Father, we just thank you for all your blessings in Jesus' name. So now, uh, everybody, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started. If you will turn with me as we talk about Noah, if you will turn with me to Genesis chapter 5. We're going to start at Genesis chapter 5. And as we start at Genesis chapter 5, we are going to focus on the scripture that talks about, um, we're going to focus on the scripture that talks about Noah. Yes, that's where we're going to start, okay? And we're going to look at Noah and what is going on uh, here with Noah. All right. Okay. So, um, let's start at, uh, no, let's start at Genesis chapter six, Genesis chapter six. And, um, let's start at verse seven. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to know that as we talk about this, one of the things that is is really important to understand is that um you know uh during that time uh, you know the the lord had evaluated the the works of man and he was not happy with the works of man and as a matter of fact there was all kinds of corruption and in genesis it gives an account of that so uh in that um uh pa particular passage uh that's where uh, you know, there there was a judgment that was placed. Um, and uh, with that being said, um, uh, now in today's times, it may it may feel like it's a judgment. It may it may seem like it's a judgment um, from the Lord. That's like, but you know, God uh, said that He didn't come into this world to destroy mankind, but to save mankind. That's what He said. So it's like, so we know today that Jesus is not rendering a judgment to destroy all of mankind. Right now we are under grace. So it's important for you to understand that if you look at John 3.16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we know that for sure. Now, just because we go through tribulation and times 
does not mean that Jesus is not with us. Jesus is with us. God is with us. But what I want to do today is I want to focus in on Noah and the calamity, the challenge that Noah faced because there was something that was coming. And when that something was coming, Noah, the Lord, chose to speak to Noah and to tell Noah about it. So here it says, uh, starting at verse 7, of Genesis chapter 6, it says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. And the earth was also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with, the violent, with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And make thee an ark of gopher wood, uh, rooms which thou shalt uh, make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion that thou shalt make of it. Now, what I like for you to see here is that, you know, and, and call attention to you, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to call attention to the fact that Noah was called. That is a scripture that speaks specifically to Noah and him being called. Now, if Noah is called, you think, well, if Noah is called, why did Noah have to go through this? You know, Noah, you know, had to go through this because this is was by God's design. God allowed this to happen to the earth. He um, because there was something that he was doing in his process. But I don't want you to get stuck on what God is doing. I want you to focus on what you can do in this time and in this hour. And in what you can do in this time and in this hour is trust God. You trust God with it is important for us to learn to trust God with everything. We trust God with our health. We trust God with our finances. We trust God with our relationships. We trust God with um, where we live. We trust God with where we go. It's important to know that God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. If God wants to um, uh, help you and make things available to you by golly, which he does, he will. He says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I mean, one of the first things that you see is that Noah was called. He was called. It says right here that in uh, Genesis chapter 6, Right at um, verse 13, it says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy the earth. Make thee an ark. So when he said, make thee an ark, that means what? That Noah was called. And if Noah was called, that means that Noah also had a purpose. And the purpose that Noah had, it says that, um, it says that a little bit further on, it says that, hey, and um, I will establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark and thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy uh, son's wives with thee and of thee every living thing of all flesh. So what you see there is that Noah also had a purpose in this thing that was going to happen. So God gave him a call, which we see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. And then we also see 
that he had a purpose. God gives you a purpose in this thing. It's important for you to know and understand that you are not just called to survive this thing. You are called to have purpose in this thing. And so it's important for you to understand what your purpose in this thing is so that you can fulfill your part to play and how to help others as well as yourself come through this. And that is an important place to be. It's like, you know what? Um, it says the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Okay? So God will tell you what he's going to do. He will tell you how to survive the thing that is going to come, and he will tell you also how to help others to survive it. That is just God in his benevolence. Now, with, Mo, with, with Noah, what you see is that Noah wasn't exempted from the problem, from the flood, from the situation that was coming just because he was called, just because God recognized him and his walk with him didn't mean that he was exempt from it, but it meant that God still had his hand on him over it. Was he protected? Yes. Did he have the resources, the materials he need to build that art? Yes. Did he have a purpose and plan in place for how he was going to deliver and help? Yes. But was he exempted from the flood? No. He was not exempted from the flood. He was obedient and followed the directions that God gave to him in that process. And as God spoke to him, he was able through that to move in the direction that God had him to move. And it protected him and his family and his uh, family's family. And God is still working the same way today that he was then. So it's important for you to know that God is available to you. He is watching over you and he desires for you to live and not die, for you to be a blessing as well as be blessed. So with this being said, um, Noah was called, he was obedient, but he still had to go through the flood, and the rains. So if you look at this, you can also look at other accounts of other individuals like Elijah with the drought. Also, these patriarchs were called. Both of these patriarchs were uh, commissioned, but they still had to go through what the land was going through at that time as they were going about fulfilling what God had called them to do. And likewise, you may be going through something. The nation may be going through something. Your community may be going through something. But God can still be with you even though your community, your nation, your world our world is going through something. So the Lord says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Now is not the time to lose sight of your faith. Now is not the time to lose sight of the direction that God has for you. But now is the time for you to know that God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And he wants to help you in very practical and realistic ways. If we go back to the scripture in Genesis chapter 6, what we'll look and we'll see a little bit further is that in um, verses 14 through uh, 14 on down through uh, 16, it says here that 
um, the Lord said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. To, he said this to Noah. He said, room shalt thou uh, make in the ark and shalt pitch it within and without pitch with pitch. And this is the fashion that thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the uh, bread of it 50 cubits, and the height of it thou shalt finish it up above, and the door of the ark shall thou uh, set with a side hold, and I, even I, the Lord, will bring, um, uh, oh, excuse me, there, there shall be a, a lower, a second, and a third stories shalt thou make it. Okay, so what we see here is that God gives directions. God gives Noah directions on how he is going to work through this thing and how he is to build what is going to happen. And then it says that, and and after you build it, it says, and behold, I even, I do bring the flood of waters upon the earth. And so listen, when God gives you directions to do something, do it. Do it the way that God says to do it. Follow his directions. Follow his leading. If he tells you to get five cases of water, get five cases of water. If he tells you, uh, don't worry about it. I got it covered. Well, you know what? God has a plan and a purpose. And he might tell you, hey, you need to be over here or you need to support this person or this group or so forth. And then you all find uh, ways to have community with one another. I don't, you know, the way that the Lord inspires you in your setting with what you're doing is important for you to be in tune with him so that you hear him and you move according to how he has you to move. Um, and just like he did for Noah here. And this is what we can learn from, that God has a plan and an instruction and a direction for each of us. And we are to look to the Lord from whence comes our help. Isn't this good? I feel like this is tasty. This is some really good word. This is not a word of abandonment to situations. This is not a word of uh, catastrophe, doom and gloom. This is a word of comfort, knowing that God is with us and is available to help. And so uh, <clears throat> what I don't want you to be is I don't want you to be delusional. It's like now it says um, God will tell you what he's going to do. He'll call you. He will also tell you how to survive it. And but he's also going to tell you how to help others. OK, so Noah was called. Noah was chosen, but he still had to go through the storm. I want you to go through the storm with wisdom. I want you to go through this storm, whatever storm you're going through in your community, in your country, in your um, in your nation, in your your world, I, in our world. I want you to go through it with the conviction of knowing that he who keeps you does not slumber nor sleep. That you can be called, you can be chosen, but it does not exempt you from going through what the world goes through, what, what the other people go through. It just means that you have his promise. Yeah. So let's talk about promise just for a second, because I think that it's important to see that Noah had a promise. So he just didn't just up one day decide, oh, I'm going to build an ark. <clears throat> and he didn't know exactly what you know, uh, what was going on. No, the Lord told him what was going on. But not only did the Lord tell him what was going on and tell him what to do in Genesis chapter six, verse 18, it says, but with thee, I will, will I establish my covenant? And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Okay? So, um, and, it, and it said that thus did Noah in 20, verse 22, and thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, and so did he. Okay? So God decided to, God gave him a promise. 
God gave him a promise to preserve him through this time, through this situation. My friend, God will preserve you. God can preserve you. God can keep you. God can deliver you. It is important for you to not lose sight of his grace because of a present situation that you see in front of you. Use wisdom. Do it the way that God said do it. Can you imagine what it would have been like if Noah would have just said, ah, you know what? This is not God. This is just my imagination. I'm not going to do, I'm just going to chill out everybody else like everybody else. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to get married. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, uh, go fishing. I'm going to party it up just like it. No, God, you know, Noah didn't do that. Instead, Noah said, you know what? God has shared with me that something's coming. Something's happening. And so then he began to diligently and effectively prepare. Now, um, um, that may mean different things to different people. And it's important to know that whatever God does, he does it decently and in order. Now, how does God do things? He doesn't do things with backbiting. He doesn't do things with slandering. He doesn't do things with uh, uh, wickedness. He doesn't do things uh, treacherously. God, you know, he, he wants us to remain in his spirit and to do things um, uh, in kindful respect and consideration of the, everyone and, and to trust in the Lord and to do good. It says, and verily you shall dwell in the land and be fed. So, uh, with this being said, um, uh, let me go back to this uh, this important point that I think is really important, and um, there, and and that is when Noah gives you, uh, when God gives you a direction like He gave to Noah. He, the difference is that you have a word from him, from the Lord, to stand on. And that word from the Lord to stand on gives you clarity on how you should be doing things. And likewise, it gives us clarity. So, you know, um, the way that it gave Noah clarity, it gives us clarity. So, again, let me go all the way to the very beginning of this conversation when I started talking about forsake not the assembling of the saints. Now, some people may feel very fixed about that and say, hey, we need to be congregating together in one place. But, you know, God has given us many miracles. He's given us many marvels since the time that this was written. And even Jesus talked about the miracles and the wonders that will be done. Even greater works than these shall be done because I go into my Father. And I believe technology is one of those wonders. It's not just a coincidence that we have the things that we have today. And technology is a benefit and can be of benefit and use practically in still fulfilling and complying with this scripture, forsake not the assembling of the saints. So we can still gather on one accord, we can still pray, we can still believe and still trust that God is um, honoring us because it says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. It didn't say where you are. It didn't say how you are. It just said, A, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So in that context, please continue to pray, continue to believe, continue to fast, continue to do the things that God says to do in his word in order to look after and to support and to be encouraging to one another. And I believe that the best is yet to come. Did you enjoy this word today? I hope you enjoyed this word today and that you are blessed by it and it provides some insight, some direction for you. And knowing that, you know, oh, and one other thing, you know, it is, it is okay to be a little bit concerned. It really is. And you know what? As a matter of fact, Jesus was concerned. 
Jesus was concerned. You know, it's like, you know, at one point in time, you know, when Jesus was about to get on the cross, you know, he was praying and he said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this pass, let this cup pass from me. So uh, we know that, you know, there are some things that, you know, man, that just are pretty difficult to go through. And um, this is, uh, you know, symbolic of some of those times where this might be, uh, you know, this is something very difficult to go through and to uh, think about what is getting ready to happen. But regardless of what it is, just know that, you know, the Lord is with us and he will not leave us nor forsake us. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He, you know, trust in the Lord and do good, and verily you shall dwell in the land and be fed. Trust in the Lord. God knows how to order your steps. He'll tell you to, you know, when to turn right. He'll tell you how to turn left. He will keep you as the apple of his eye. He will keep you and not slumber nor sleep. So don't be worried about your business. Don't be worried about, um, uh, you know, um, you know, all, you know, your stuff, you know, just drop into the, no, it's like what you need to do is be, listen, keep your heart in tune, your ear in tune with what thus saith the Lord at this time and this hour concerning you so that you can move forward with victory and in confidence. You know, there are some things that God gives. He gives wisdom. He gives revelation. He gives witty ideas. He shows you how to do things that you didn't know how to do. He shows you how to walk. He shows you who to conversate with. He shows you who to make connections with. God will continue to lead you forward. You just got to trust in him. You got to rely on him. If God tells you to wait, and not to go there, don't go there. Stay, wait, wait until God gives you the go ahead. And if God don't give you the go ahead, then don't go. It's like, but if God gives you the go ahead, you know what? You follow his leading, you follow his unction and you follow him forward and God will bless you. He will encourage you. He will lead you forward. And I think that you'll find a blessing in the way that God inspires and leads you. So the next question is, how does God inspire and lead his people? And I would like to talk to you about that also. Actually, I, I do talk about that on, on my YouTube channel, Emerging Christians YouTube channel. I talk about how to hear the voice of God, and I talk about some things there. It's like, please um, feel free to join me there as, the, as I have talked about those things. Plug in, like, share, subscribe, and support what it is that I'm doing here. I hope that it has been a blessing to you and that you're encouraged and abundantly enriched by what I'm sharing with you and that you are inspired and you have godly wisdom and all that the Lord is doing for you. Okay? All right, let me just pray with you as we go ahead and close um, this session. And um, please leave your uh, comments. Um, and if you have prayer requests, please uh, put them forward and um, uh, be happy to pray with you regarding your needs in this time and this hour. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing, everything that you continue to do. Please guide our leaders. Please guide uh, those people in government. Please uh, watch over uh, them as they make choices uh, regarding um, things that will affect the rest of us. Also, Lord, help us to recognize the part that you have for us to do in this world, in this time, in this hour. Help us to be wise, help us to be loving, help us to be kind, help us to follow you and not to follow the voice of a stranger. And Father, we just thank you for all your blessings as you continue to bless us through this time as we continue to move forward in you, trusting in your goodness and believing in your favor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. May your day, your week, your life be richly 
richly blessed. In Jesus' name.